Welcome to your favorite co-pilot news show, where me and Todd Clint jump, come together every time there's newsworthy, whether that's once a week, once a month, once a year, or probably not once a year, <laughs> to tell you guys all the latest that's going on with Microsoft's AI as quickly as possible, which is really hard because let's face it, Todd likes to talk a whole bunch. So with that said, Todd, you can talk because it's now your second. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got a bunch of stuff to talk about, so I'll kick right up. The, one of the first things I got excited about this week with AI was the SharePoint knowledge agents that Microsoft announced. So these are new agents inside of SharePoint, not to be confused with the uh, things we could create before, but these are in-context tools that you can use to tag data, create content, get context around your data, uh, really great things. But I think they buried the lead in this story because they, they talked about not only will we be able to create metadata, it will also be able to consume metadata, hopefully as early as next month. So this thing that we've been wanting AI to be able to do with our SharePoint data the whole time was understand not just the data, but the metadata. Hopefully that's, uh, that's coming as early as next month. So keep an eye out, look for SharePoint knowledge agents. That's something that your tenant admin has to turn on. So, uh, Bake some cookies, get a hold of him, and have him turn that on for you. And speaking of something you have to turn on, number two on my list is Microsoft announced just the other day that Anthropic models are now going to be available in Copilot Studio and inside of the Copilot chat, at least in the beginning, by a researcher. So your admin has to turn those on because they have to enable external models, which should be a little bit of a, why, why an external model? Because unlike when you use Copilot or Copilot Studio today and you use the OpenAI chat GPT models, what those models are all hosted by Microsoft. So your data has enterprise data protection. It is protected, it's safe, it's not used to train other models, et cetera. Now, when you use these anthropic models and other external models, we are sending the data outside of Microsoft. So we do not get enterprise data protection. And so what anthropic is doing with those, I've not read the fine print, but you should be cognizant of this is that these new models, you know, while they're interesting, I want to go try them out too. We want to make sure we're not sharing secrets with them until we're sure we're feel good about sharing secrets. So another fun thing that got announced was that Microsoft has announced that, that Copilot Studio can now take advantage of Power Automate Desktop for agents. It calls it something, it's something it calls computer use. So think of this as an RPA, a robotic process automation, but it's got all of that plus AI. So now if you've got any line of business applications that don't have APIs, things like that, now Copilot Studio can take over your machine and click things and fill out forms, submit info, all that, just like you would, but without all that work and with the power of AI. So this is great for any processes that you want to automate that rely on legacy systems or just any kind of system that just doesn't have a good well-baked API. Now you can use computer use to get in there and power with AI. And speaking of powering things with AI, I kind of keep these together. I'm so fancy. The whole fun of AI prompts. If you haven't been using AI prompts, you can use those with your Power Apps, your Power Automate, and Copilot Studio to pass it some data and then be like, hey, think about this and give me a response. So if you've ever thought, man, I wish in the middle of using my app, they could, you know, use Copilot or ChatGPT to, you know, make this better. That's what an AI prompt is. What they just announced is that we now have the ability to use code generation inside of AI prompts. So now you can use those prompts that like you always did, but now they can do things like create charts, create images, create files, do complex math, because now it can use Python code to take it to that next level. So we've had this in most large language models for a long time. Now we have that inside of AI prompts. So another thing not to be outdone by being able to use Anthropics models with your agents. Now GPT-5 from OpenAI is showing up everywhere inside of our tools. So you're going to see it in Copilot chat. You're going to see it in AI prompts. You're going to see it in your Copilot studio agents. And this is the ability to use, we get, we've always been able to use the, the 4.0 and the 4.1 models. Now, even though those are great and I love them with all of my heart, but GPT-5 is just a little bit better. And so now you can go in and start turning that on in your different, all the different places that you use uh, AI and potentially get even better performance and better results with your AI experience. The M365 Copilot license, first thing Microsoft led with that for that license was the fact that it gave us the ability to use Copilot in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, et cetera. Um, so what they've just recently done now is they're like, hey, people really kind of like that. What if we get people a little bit more interested? So now anyone with an M365 account is able to use Copilot in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook uh, for free. They don't need that $30 license. Now it's not as fully powerful. It doesn't have the full tenant context, but 
it is a co-pilot agent that is now able to help you with those different office documents, work with those, take advantage of them, you know, get what is helping you with things, understanding your content, helping you compose stuff. So it is a really nice addition that now all your users should be seeing. So one thing I've learned using Microsoft products for 20 years is Microsoft loves itself a good product rename. And this week is no different. So Agent Builder has been renamed to Copilot Studio Lite. Now you're probably saying to yourself, I don't see that name Agent Builder all over very much. Well, it was mostly a documentation term, so not a lot has changed. As a matter of fact, nothing's changed. The functionality is the same, the utility is the same, except now any place where you used to see uh, Agent Builder, now you'll see Copilot Studio Lite. Well, if Todd gets to talk about a name renamed, then I do too. So <laughs> they also went ahead and over on the Copilot Studio side for a while, the consumption license for that has been called messages. So it'd be like, hey, if you do this, it takes five messages. But it's only one message, it didn't make any sense. So they renamed Copilot Studio Messages to Copilot Studio Credits. Oh, this name change does make a lot of sense. It's very, very intuitive that they did it, but just heads up there. If you're seeing people tell you about messages, you're like, I can't find anything about messages anymore. Copilot Studio credits. And speaking of credits and licensing, Microsoft has continued to add more value to that $30 a month M365 Copilot license. So if you've looked at it in the past and decided the value really wasn't there, go back and take a look at it again because they keep adding more things. This is our first time doing this, this new show for Copilot. Hopefully you find a lot of good information in it. If you're watching this video, go ahead and look in the, the links below. There's a blog post. We've got all this summed up with all the, the links. If you'd love something like this in your inbox, you can sign up for the inbox thing. But most important of all, if you love this format and you think that this is something that you would find value with, let us know. Leave a comment. Send us an email. Send us a telegram. Telegram. I love getting snail mail. Send me a snail mail message and let us know how much you love this so we know that we should keep doing it for you.